In DC, for DC. DC Radio, 96.3 HD4 and dcradio.gov. Welcome to Inside Style. I'm your host, George Varel, and thank you for tuning in today. Have you ever asked yourself, how do I promote my business, my project? How do I network? You know, what about choosing what to wear? Should I go to network events? Uh, our guest today has all the answers. <laughs> the fabulous Miss Jan Duplain, founder of Duplain Global Enterprises. Jan, darling, oh. welcome. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Oh my George. goodness, Thank and you. I'm so glad we're filming this so that oh. everybody can see this <laughs> fabulous outfit that you have on today. I mean, Thank just you. amazing. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. How are you? Thank you. I actually, I am just in a fabulous place. I'm a late bloomer, and it's all blooming <laughs> right now. Seriously, it's okay. like everything's come together. Okay, and magic. And how did how did that journey start? Because I understand we talked earlier that you're from California, so that's yeah. that kind of like you know you must be twenty on Sugar Mountain vibe. <laughs> but um, how how did you how did you get to D.C. Yeah. from California? Thank you for asking. Um, well, I was my father. I always start off with my father because okay. he was such a huge influence in my life. He mm -hmm. was a newspaper man. He owned a newspaper oh, wow. in this small little town called nobody's ever heard of La Cunada Flint Ridge it's like oh, wow. it's like Brigadoon it comes you know okay. you, you it comes out once a year but my dad was a newspaper man who tr wanted to be a foreign correspondent and travel the world mm. and he instilled this in our family early on because my parents had gone to Stanford I was born in San Mateo and we lived there a couple of years before he, at the age of three, he said, we're all going to go to South America. Mm. So my brother, who was a year older, myself, we all took off and went, traveled all over South and Central America. And, you know, when you, now, of course, I was three. Okay. But there's an energy flow or something that takes place when you are, early on, you get a sense that there's a bigger world out there mm -hmm. for you. And so he had a great impact on me. I went on to to work in Hollywood. You can't be in California near near the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Pasadena, California, near Hollywood without putting your toe in there at some point, which how, I did. How and, was that? And when I say doing Hollywood, I was a uh, at a literary agency okay. where we handled authors and book because at the time you had to write a book, a bestseller book. Mm -hmm to make that into a screenplay that then went into a film. Mm. Now, that changed mm -hmm. later on with Easy Rider when they knew that they could just create, create films, films and they didn't need the book to go with it. Uh, that, that, there that was were, the late 60s. What is, yeah. Easy Rider is, what, 69? Very good. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that being in the literary agency, what I felt was that I needed to go to New York and be with the publishers since I was doing literary work, work. and to go to the publishing world of New York. Mm -hmm. So leaving my little town of La Cunada and then Hollywood and then on to New York, and it was there that I uh, began working with a CBS Cinema Center Films. Mm. And um, I don't know if, you, if you're a 60-minute person but, I am. but Don Hewitt yes was, it, 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 put created it together, that. Yeah, created and that is one of the great news shows of all time anyway I was there at working at CBS ultimately came back down to Washington DC in 1971 okay and that's a critical time for me and the city to remember because it was 1971 that Kennedy Center opened up and Wolf Trap opened up and the theater world mm -hmm. grew from a very tiny little theater world, world to what is become today. We are second only to New York in yeah. terms of ticket sales yeah. and who we are. And as we a now theater. think of Washington about theater. Absolutely, isn't that amazing? You know, so yeah. think about and. When I came to Washington, I wasn't thinking I'm going there to do theater, mm -hmm. or this is going to, and and so when I came, so when I came to Washington, I had gone to school here at American. I should mention that yes. that was my last two years. So I had touched base with with Washington, and I knew mm -hmm. about Washington, but '71 was really the beginning of my career, career. here, mm -hmm. and it started at Ford's Theater, 
and the woman that founded Ford's Theater was married to Don Hewitt of mm-hmm. 60 Minutes. So, so you already had that. And that's what we talk about, too, when I was saying about networking. Was that important from the very beginning of your career, or how do you play about talking about networking? Let's talk about that it a bit. It is everything for me. It really has... It, I, you know, I never saw myself as what... I, I think people struggle, some of us struggle with who, you know, what, what do I have to offer? Is mm-hmm. there anything I have to offer? Because there are so many bright, you know, visionaries and mm-hmm. people of scientists and mm-hmm. medical and you name it. And it was sort of what, but my thing, which I never really gave the value to until you get older and older and older, you understand that your world, your life has been connecting people to people and what gives me the most satisfaction is to introduce George to Cynthia to Susie to bring people together Together. just like an artist would put together a a painting my painting is bringing people together well you're known you are known as the (laughs) the great connector (laughs) mother are you listening oh my goodness so how did that enhance so you know making those connections what what were your thoughts about this is a place you know living Mm -hmm. on the west coast living in new york Mm -hmm. what was that deciding factor to say hey i want to put my footprint here in washington well i don't know if i came here thinking i would stay here per se i Mm -hmm. mentioned to you when i first came in that my lifestyle of a Californian and surf, <laughs> surf and beach and more relaxed and more flamboyant, coming here to Washington at that time, my friend who was a Californian who'd come here, she said, Jan, you're going to have to make some changes. You cannot <laughs> run around in those white boots and wild, you know, you're going to have to tone this down. No. We wear gray and we wear suits here. And we're the government. Mm. And I said, okay. But now keep in mind, my first job here was Ford's Theater. So I knew that there was a more than just the government. Government. And there were people who were looking for that type of person to come in and say, yeah, and not feel different. Yes. <laughs> now, but so, so being in the theater world early on mm-hmm. acclimated me to the, to the fact that ultimately I stayed on. And because from 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 W from uh, Ford's Theater, I went on to work at at public television, mm. WETA, okay. which is to me the greatest. Public television is the I greatest absolutely. teacher of all time. Can we talk about that a little bit? I, I think it. because right. you know when we were growing up, <clears throat> yeah, you know it was just you would see just a few shows, you know, like programming in the morning for kids Sesame or just Street. yeah Sesame Street or you know, and as you you know got into like the eighties, you would see like these documentaries. But now, geez, so let's talk about that time that you were there. How, what were the the pivotal moments that you saw that growth and, you know, working there? Thank you, because I love uh, WETA and what it, for me, I was never really a student. I was, uh, and what WETA did for me really was educate me about the world, from nature to to, to mm. masterpiece theater, all of the great stories and the documentaries on people's lives, mm-hmm. biographies. I'm fascinated with people's lives. Where are you from? What? Which is why what you're doing, George, is exactly what's perfect for your personality. You. Yeah. And so <laughs> you're you. interested in people. I am if very, you're a people person, yeah. <laughs> so um, and. I, I worked with, to me, one of some of the great peoples. I worked with Ken Burns, mm. who is the legendary the documentary, documentary yeah. of all times. He really, and he asked the question, who are we as Americans? Who are we? That's a good question for us today Day, yeah. to ask ourselves again, what are our values? Who are we? And that's what started him with Civil War. The Roosevelt. The Roosevelt. And how he took... Three, Teddy, Eleanor, and Franklin, and that they were such three totally different individuals and all related was just amazing, don't you think? He's brilliant. He brilliant. is absolutely brilliant. At one point when I was working with him, that which, by the way, I was there at public television in 1982-95. I was there 15 years. Mm-hmm. 
And when uh, Mrs. Campbell, who was our, I don't know if that's a name that means anything mm -hmm. to you, but she and her husband were very involved with the civil rights. Okay. And she is really the founder of WETA and lived to be almost 100. Wow. And I'm counting on that, too. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, today, I always say to everybody that, you know, the 80-year-old the is the 60, the it 90 is, is the 70, yeah. the 100 is yeah. the 80. So we are living longer, and mm -hmm. we have more opportunities as a result of that. So that's why if you're a late bloomer, don't give up. <laughs> you know, it's the best is yet to come, seriously. Yeah, I, I totally believe that you know I think the best part of getting older is that um, your journey has given you more confidence you've seen things and I've learned I don't know about you I've learned from I don't even call them mistakes I call them things that I thought were the thing to do and then I learned differently yeah. and uh, I learned more from the things that were not supposed to be than the things that were Yes, they ha they have a way of really sticking in your mind. Like we are, you know the the this, the great story of you go down the street and then mm -hmm. you fall in the hole and then you mm -hmm. you know the next time you go down the street you walk around the hole mm -hmm. and then the third time you don't even go down the street. <laughs> so you know exactly so, right. That's what we're talking about so learning. What yeah. was it that that so this is such an incredible t thing, you know? Because one of the things that I think about is my parents worked in government and they had one job and I think for me that would have been something that would probably would have destroyed my spirit I don't I like different projects I like working different experiences and that's your career so how yeah. is was that something that was inspiring to you to go to the next project or the next part of your journey I know you you're, you are supposed to have your you know your vision your goal and then it's you know, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be, and for me, <laughs> who am I, who, where am I? But it was a, I think each thing that I was uh, brought to my life and was, because I'm interested in everything. If you are a person that is interested in a lot of different things, it it's always expansive, and if you're meeting people that are interesting too, yeah. then it leads you into other <laughs> things. So... In a way, I've always talked about the different pockets here in Washington that I have been involved with. One is the press club, okay. the Nash is the media, okay. the broadcasting, thus CBS, and coming here with public television. Explain that. So explain yeah. that what you did and how that works a little bit. Well, again, you know, coming with a father who mm -hmm. was an editor of a newspaper, and that journalism was neither fear nor favor mm -hmm. was his. You know, okay. was his message to me and his d love for traveling the world. So he uh, wanting media has always been important too because as a PR person, you you want to engage the media for your clients Client. mm -hmm. to make sure that they are getting all that they want to be mm -hmm. getting and mm -hmm. how to handle that. Mm -hmm. So. I, as in 1971, when I got here, I joined the National Press Club. And it was that year they opened it up for women. It was 1971. Oh, when that, they was opened another, it for, that was another thing I wanted to talk to you about, too, because you landed yeah. here right in the middle at the beginning of uh, the women's rights movement. Yeah. And, yeah. and I remember seeing <laughs> Gloria Steinem. And Betty Friedan was my client. Really? She would, now that's a, we could do a whole. Oh, thing. Uh, but let's do part two. I'm Don't think we have to do parts. She's a very interesting woman. Very interesting woman. She was very tough. And another that these great women though, Sarah McClendon, for example, mm. that may not be names of people right. that you're. But they should hear it and Google them. Yeah, yeah. because Sarah was really there was Helen uh, Thomas, Thomas, of course, oh, which, right? Wow. Right. But Is she that, was the first woman who sat up front and demanded that you were going to see her yeah. and answer her. Yeah. 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 You know, actually there was another woman that I worked for uh that uh well, and I can't I'm blanking on her name right mm -hmm. now, but she she had the May Craig. Okay. May Craig is a name nobody would know, but she had these little hats, and she would take on JFK. Okay. Do you I do. remember, I, I remember sort of seeing those in documents. Yeah, Maine. I didn't know her name, but uh, she knew? was the only woman that would be like, you know, like prim, yes. primly dressed. 
and I worked <laughs> Gloves, for her. Really? So, and when and I was these in were America, learning experiences for you, don't you think? This, uh, all of these influences, these mm-hmm. people of mm-hmm. great, really important. Frankie Hewitt at Ford's Theater had a great impact on my life. Okay. Oh, uh, Elizabeth Campbell of WETA, mm-hmm. Sharon Percy Rockefeller, who took over public television. Okay. These are uh, women that had great impact on me, as my grandmother did. I was talking, I was giving great on it. You know, homage to my father, mm-hmm. but my grandmother played a huge role. For many of us, we had diff- some of us had difficulties with our mothers. Right. <laughs> my mother was beautiful and fabulous. I can hear her saying now, mm-hmm. but there was always a, a struggle with her, and so it oftentimes is the grandparents mother, yeah, and the, the grandmother that mm-hmm. is there, there. Mm-hmm. And she was she wanted to be an actress. She wanted to be a great star. So and she so, didn't instill, instill all of that kind of fun. And, and, so yeah. what did your so what are some of the things that you think about? You know, yes, you must network. Yeah. What, you don't have to work the same job all your life. I think there was some wonderful. Not well. Wonderful is not the the perfect word for it, but I think coming out of the pandemic, we found that we could generate a second career. We could generate something to do something differently. We could work for ourselves. We could take that dream and do those kinds of things. So that's where you come into play. It's like, yes, I have my own business. Yes, I work for the government. Yes, I work for corporate America. And now I don't have that job. I'm 48. I'm 50. You know, I'm not yeah. ready to retire, or I'm yeah. older. Yeah. What is it? Do I still go to network yeah. events? Where do yeah. I start? What do I do? Yeah. You know, it's interesting <laughs> because I, as we have talked, I'm a great networker, and I think every I I I go to things all the time because I my my meeting people inspires me and connects me and pushes me on to other things. Not everybody is as as uh, open or wants to do as much networking and mm-hmm. events right. that I do. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it people take a different path. I do encourage people to have a mentor or have a have a coach or somebody that can help with because as you're talking about every, people that are coming out of the pandemic mm-hmm. that say I am not going to work the way I worked before right. and <laughs> I want to do something different mm-hmm. and this is where you either become part of a organization like the Public Relations Association of America or some kind of group of similar interests where mm-hmm. they can help guide you. I had a speakers bureau for a while. So having, mm. you know, which is uh, a lot of people want to get into, wanted to get into this. It's very lucrative. And if it's done right now, there are super stop, talk, top people that do uh, mm-hmm. speaking engagements. But there are organizations for everything that is of interest for to you. So what what is of interest to you that, is calling to you and that doesn't always happen you need you need and by talking to other people at least that way for me it helps me learn about different things that's the way i learn about different things Mm -hmm. i am an experiential woman and that's it's not going to be coming from me just from books Mm -hmm. or things it has to it (laughs) an experience it's experience Mm -hmm. so what so what i was talking about is that the the press world is a is a big part of my life here today because I'm very active with the with the press club and the mm-hmm. International Correspondence Committee. The other is the theater world, which we talked about because I'm on the board of Theater Washington. Okay. And to know that we are just this incredibly robust, exciting, and Angie Gates, who is just yes. my <laughs> beloved he- heroine of all times. Yeah. And I'm so glad Latoya is here now. Yeah. And but. Um, you know, to that the theater world. She, I had, I had asked Angie to be the honorary chair for the Helen Hayes Awards, mm. because not everybody knows and that. And nobody kn- that Helen Hayes is from Washington. Bingo! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she was the greatest American stage, stage actress. Actress. The she got every award for every film. And you know, and she theater. did a lot better. I think. Than Tallulah Bankhead. People think yeah. about the great yeah. Broadway stars Tallulah Bankhead, but it really yeah. was Helen Hayes. And yes. Helen Hayes was able to transition into film. Like as late as 1970 in airports, she played the little old lady kind of walking around. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> she is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Helen Hayes, we are so fortunate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Bonnie Nelson Schwartz who created the... Uh, because we knew there was the Tonys mm -hmm. in New York. There's the Oscars. That's the film world. And But what is Washington going to have? And it was, as you said, the woman that was born and raised here and was the greatest star of her time, Helen Hayes. Hayes. So Angie was the honorary chair. I'm the chair. I'm going to be the chair again this year, so I'm going to uh, be looking for people, George, please, to, I'd to, love get to, you, get to get involved. To get involved. I would love that. Because yeah. we, are, we have 90 theaters in this city, and people, when I ask them, how many theaters do you think we have? They, you know, it's wow. 10, 10, 20, 50. We have 90 theaters. This is one of the most robust. Who knew that this government, sleepy little government town, was going to be as... Mm -hmm. So we have that, that world. And then there's the diplomatic community. Yeah. And the diplomatic community, which is the largest and most impressive and influential diplomats in the world we have here in Washington, D.C., and that's how, my other pocket. How was, that, how was your work with, with the diplomatic court? Because we... And it's so funny, living here, as long as I... I I only think about that when it's time for the embassies to open. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just living here yeah. because you're doing so many things, yeah. you only think of government, but there yeah. are different governments here. Talk to That's us right. about yeah. your Thank experience you. with That's that. That's because the diplomatic community is so important for us. As I said, we have 180 embassies here. And the way I got started in this, and I give credit to the Fenty family. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and then ultimately it was Gray under Gray that mm -hmm. I was introduced to a little organization called Cultural Tourism DC, a little nonprofit, and their mission was to help uh, the residents of Washington learn more about the streets and what we have here, mm -hmm. what made Washington, Washington DC unique. Mm -hmm. And they created the concept of doing of reaching out to the embassies, and they. They asked me if I would like to work with them, and we created what's called Passport DC, Around oh, the World Embassy Tour. Yeah, I see that. Don't I see that on uh, PBS? Pass, Passport DC, isn't that something? Well, you, that you may be thinking of the public television yes, uh, okay. programming okay. with the passport. Okay. But that's... That's but, but this passport DC is where all the embassies open their doors, yes. and it's in May. Mm -hmm. And the I've first gone. week, have you done that mm -hmm. with the lines? That's what I. That's what I'm saying. That's the okay. only time that I think. With, well, I heard you saying that. Yeah, I, thought, like, I think you're talking about passport yeah, DC. I didn't know that. That's what it was called. That's, that's what it's amazing. called. Amazing. One that's an, passport mm -hmm. will take you around the world in one day. And it's usually a Saturday, isn't it's it? It's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's always the first Saturday in May. It's Thank amazing. You, yeah. Thank you, George. <laughs> first Saturday in May is the non-EU mm -hmm. European Union mm -hmm. embassies, mm -hmm. which are about 160, and then you have the next weekend is the European Union, and we now have 27. Because we Great Britain is now has pulled out of EU, so that's right. Yeah. So that's what I've been working on for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And Events DC is the sponsor and oversees that, and that's uh, Angie's role. I'm so glad she's in that top position now okay. to oversee that. Okay. But embassy. So and the other project that we began was the Embassy Chef Challenge mm. at the same time, which is when all the embassies and the chefs yeah, come out can, and culinary diplomacy yes, at its. Yeah. And then the other is fashion and diplomacy, and that you would be. I'm looking at you right now, yeah, and all your sparkling and <laughs> greatness. Seriously, you look fabulous. Thank you. And we are not the fashion city of the world, mm -hmm. but we are the diplomatic mm -hmm. fashion city of the world here in Washington. And so, a young woman named Indira Gumarova, who is the wife, is the wife of the Czech Republic mm -hmm. ambassador, created mm -hmm. this concept of fashion and diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Fashion diplomacy. So have they, you know, because there, I was on the uh, fashion commission, and I think that. Um, people sleep on Washington because there is a thriving fashion thing. and youth because you know every chance I get I work with the Marion Barry Summer Youth Program 14 to 16 every summer and we do it's not so much of a fashion camp as it is workforce development because I want them to be able to know proper dress for the workforce I do think that you should be a chameleon also to play to every role um, in your dress but we have so many young designers from T-shirts to, you know, even D.C. incarcerated youth 
we have all of this wonderful, rich talent that I lived in New York for 10 years that I don't see. So I love that we are all discovering that it's here and bringing it to the forefront about this amazing talent that we have here. But, you know... Thank you, Ian Williams. And yeah, you yeah, mayor, yeah. And you for being on the Mayor's Commission for so, this. So, you know, you definitely have to come back. I want to <laughs> ask you... Uh, what do you what advice would you give to anyone that our listeners young old whatever that to say you know what's going to what's my next move yeah what what's, is my next what's move? my next move where do you start yeah where do you start well <laughs> you say, yeah <laughs> wow George uh you know it it is uh I, I would have to sit with each person. Where right. have you been? Because where have you been? What happens? And where we want to go next? Yeah. And so, look, feeling. You know, usually there is a feeling inside of things that we, our dreams that we have, mm. and it's for some of us who are interested in everything. It can be hard. Right. I want to this and this and right, this. Right. So. Um, that's why I say it is helpful if you have a coach or someone can help you steer. Because otherwise, you're just sort of, you know, floating around right. out there. I, I'm I'm a great believer in that we need all the help we can get, and whether it's through <laughs> therapy, through 12-step programs. I mean, I could sit here the rest of the day talking about. I I do I'm not I do not do things on my own. Mm -hmm. Some people create and do things and, and yeah, just they decide are. things. Yeah, I like you know? assistance. You know? Yeah. And they they they're very good. They go into that inner place. Mm -hmm. I go into an inner place, place too. To... But anybody there? Yeah. No, I need people to help to bounce off of. Okay. And I need to come and talk to George. George, here's how do you feel about this? Yeah. So I, I go back to, which is what my modus operandi is, which is, you know, people and where are people that I am interested in those opportunities and can I be in organizations? Not everybody wants to do it that way. I understand mm -hmm. that. So it's but start if with you are your best out. friend or yeah. you've got your mom or mm -hmm. whatever it is that yeah. is your person who you can talk to and share. The thing I say to any, everybody we have to be able at this at to be open and honest about who we are. I, I'm pounding this because so many of us uh, that is so we have trouble with that mm -hmm. wanting to to share who we really are. Mm -hmm. And I was watching what was it Pink the other night. The the women that have come forth and are very open about who the, who, who they, they are, are and talk openly and that goes for men all of us who mm -hmm. we can break down whatever this these yeah just be, do your thing do your thing <laughs> you know well thank you Question. so so very much Aww. for taking the time in this fabulous outfit Aww. and jewelry and accessories and great smile and you know we've been talking to the wonderful <laughs> wonderful fabulous uh, Jan Duplain of uh, founder of Duplain Global Enterprises Google that name you can just find her on Facebook Instagram we want to thank all our listeners for tuning in to Inside Style I'm your host, George Orell, and remember, real style starts with being comfortable in your own skin. We'll see you next time. In D.C., for D.C., D.C. Radio, 96.3 HD4, and dcradio.gov.